Welcome to Whistle Where You Work. I'm Mark Cohen. There are powerful reasons to keep our mouths shut when we witness wrongdoing on the job. Our careers to think of, families to feed, loyalties to maintain. While most of us are prepared to swallow a lot, there is a gagging point and then we either seek change or cynically rationalize our way uh, and our lack of spine and, and die a bit inside when we do. If you're facing such a gagging point, our guest, Tom Devine, has a cocktail of tested strategies for saving your soul and perhaps many lives as well. Tom is the legal director of the Government Accountability Project and now the co-author with Tarek Maserani of the Corporate Whistleblower Survival Guide, a handbook for committing the truth published by Barrett Kohler. Tom, welcome back to Whistle Where You Work. Thanks, howdy. <laughs> howdy. Uh, what led you to write this book? Well, it's a chance to share 32 years of lessons learned with uh, working with over 5,000 whistleblowers so that they can make more of a difference uh, with uh, less personal pain in the process to accomplish more and, and suffer less when they uh, try to commit the truth because you will be treated like you've committed a crime. And in a lot of senses, this is a cocktail that's designed to prevent you from having a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so whistleblower, what's that? Well, there's legal definitions and um, really kind of the street law perspective on it. And uh, to, to go to the latter, um, the people that we help at the Government Accountability Project that we recognize as whistleblowers, uh, who we're committed to helping are individuals who use free speech rights to challenge abuses of power that betray the public trust. Uh, and to me, this is freedom of speech when it really counts. It's uh, easy to have free speech in a sports stadium where you're calling names to a referee who blew a call. Uh, you know, there may be 30,000 people. Uh, uh, sharing analogous uh, expletives and uh, it's hard to retaliate against uh, uh, a whole stadium and plus everybody knows that the ref blew it. Uh, whistleblowers are people who are sticking their necks out when they may be uh, the only or a handful of folks uh, who can make a difference about something that uh, very serious consequences um, if they don't speak out for society but equally serious consequences for themselves that they're risking if they do. Now you say this is about free speech. Uh, the Constitution talks about free speech in the First Amendment, but this is for corporations and the Constitution uh, only protects people's uh, free speech rights vis-a-vis -vis the government, isn't that right? Well, the Constitution was uh, the basic structure for our government, so that, that makes sense. But at the Government Accountability Project, we don't care what bureaucracy is selling out the public, whether it's government or corporate. Um, the, the key thing is that they're abusing their power and betraying us. Okay. So who is the audience for this book? Well, there's basically three audiences. Um, the first is the whistleblowers. Uh, this is to uh, help them um, be true to themselves on making uh, a crossroads decision in their life, for better or worse. It, things will never be the same again. Uh, and uh, if they decide to blow the whistle, to um, figure out the most effective ways of doing it, uh, mm -hmm. minimizing the risk of consequences for themselves and their families, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, the tactics, the strategies uh, involved in, in choosing those options and acting on them. Uh, a second audience is corporations, mm -hmm. uh, and corporate leaders in particular. Uh, we're really hoping that we convince corporate leaders that it's bad business, if not apocalyptically bad business, uh, to silence or kill the messenger. Uh, uh, the people at Enron learned that lesson the hard way. Uh, when Sharon Watkins warned that uh, we're cooking the books, boss, and we're not going to be able to get away with this and it's going to bankrupt us, um, he chose to figure out a way to get rid of her. Uh, and the consequences, uh, Enron went bankrupt. He became a convicted felon and died in disgrace before he could make it to jail. Uh, then at uh, MCI Corporation. But you, but you say, and that's an interesting example, you say that it's to convince the corporations to do the right thing, essentially. But wasn't it 
wasn't the problem that Sharon Watkins faced in some ways, that she was attempting to tell uh, the criminal uh, to stop committing a crime? Well, that's when you end up with uh, retaliation uh, or when someone feels threatened by hearing the truth. Uh, in most situations, um, whistleblowers have an opportunity, if they handle themselves right and they don't come in pointing the fingers, uh, to uh, be problem solvers, potential problem solvers, as opposed to accusers. Uh, and uh, we think a very, very basic lesson is that um, by hearing the bad news and acting on it uh, to solve problems, it's sort of equivalent to swallowing the bitter pill that um, keeps your company out of the <coughs> fiscal hospital uh, in the long term. Uh, and uh, the folks at BP, I bet, wish they'd listened to the whistleblowers who had warned them um, before uh, that tragedy occurred. The folks at MCI listened to Cynthia Cooper, their chief auditor who blew the whistle, and they survived. So well, let's go back to the question of that individual who's facing this gagging moment, that they can't do it anymore. What are their considerations at that point? Uh, I think their first consideration is to find out what is being true to themselves. I mean, this is a scenario where you have to choose between valid but conflicting values that we've all been raised with. You know, where uh, raised that um, we don't like troublemakers and people who are cynical naysayers and we like team players. But on the other hand, we don't like bureaucratic sheep. We don't respect those too much. We cherish rugged individualists, people who don't just go along with the crowd. Uh, well, we're supposed to choose. Uh, or uh, we don't like rats, tattletales, squealers. Um, but then, on the other hand, uh, we don't like people who just look the other way or uh, 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 who see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, that's giving up your humanity. That's turning into a monkey. Uh, one of our country's biggest disgraces was um, the people who closed their window shades uh, rather than uh, intervene when a woman was raped and killed on the sidewalks of New York City. Well, whistleblowers have to make that choice. or They have to choose between what's more important between the right to privacy and the public's right to know, or who is their loyalty to? Is their loyalty to the company that's uh, supporting their family? You don't bite the hand that feeds you. Um, but what about loyalty to the law um, uh, or loyalty to our country? It's called patriotism uh, when a defense contractor is cheating and our troops are dying as a result. Very, very tough choices. And that's the first thing. Uh, once, once someone has done that, uh, and I think a big part of that choice is getting a consensus with their loved ones, uh, the people who are uh, going to be affected by their decision. Uh, you're not doing this alone. And if you make the decision alone, you're liable to end up being alone uh, in the aftermath. Once you've made that choice, uh, well, then you want to start doing your homework in advance before you stick your neck out. Uh, it's checking with other workers, uh, not giving yourself away, but checking with them to see if um, maybe you're mistaken. Uh, or how, how deep is um, the breakdown in credibility and legitimacy for your organization's uh, uh, activities and misconduct? Uh, will you be alone or will there be solidarity from other witnesses? Um, getting the documents that you need. Once you're exposed as a threat, you'll be isolated. Flow of information will dry up. Um, well, that's kind of the second thing. And you need to do that with very experienced um, experts. Uh, with lawyers who will um, help you run a legal gauntlet of uh, gathering your evidence. So you're in a catch-22. If you um, don't have the evidence, then um, might as well be hot air. Nobody will take it seriously. Um, but if you have the evidence, the company will probably accuse you of being a criminal who stole their property. Uh, and these are tough ways to uh, secure your proof. I think a third thing that you want to do is give the company a chance to do the right thing. Uh, not by threatening them, not by warning them that um, it's time for a cover-up, but by, um, from a loyal perspective, um, trying to be a problem solver and seeing if that works. If it does, uh, you'll accomplish a lot more with a lot less pain in the process. I think the fourth thing then... Well, let me ask you about that one. Uh, how do you do that? How do you um, give the company a chance to self-correct without offering the company a chance to cover up? 
Uh, for some employers, it's uh, almost routine. It's their job to conduct audits or inspections and just don't pull punches on, on your report. And if there's no follow through on it, you double check to make sure that everyone's actually received it and read it and uh, so you're not overlooking something. Uh, for other folks, um, it might be uh, raising concerns about liability uh, in, a, in a meeting to map out plans or vision. Uh, what are we going, are there any liability problems here? Uh, are we operating the right side of the law? And if we're going to be crossing over that, um, how are we going to defend ourselves? What is the risk that we're taking from this course of action? Um, sometimes there's a real bureaucratic momentum uh, almost. Uh, and then probably the bottom line strategic trip, we've got a baker's dozen, but the most significant for me is to be proactive with your own strategy for committing the truth, uh, that uh, uh, the company is going to be reacting to. Um, if you're just responding to their initiatives, you'll be, you'll be totally steamrolled. You'll be overwhelmed. Um, uh, it's just such an imbalance uh, of resources and conventional power. And the strategy that we advocate at GAP is what we call legal campaigns where uh, instead of the corrupt bureaucracy surrounding the whistleblower, we're informational matchmakers. We get the truth out to all the people who should be benefiting from the isolated whistleblower's knowledge. And then it's um, society surrounding the corrupt bureaucracy instead of that organization surrounding the individual. And that's how you turn the truth into power. We're going to take a brief pause here and be back with more of Tom Devine in just a minute. Okay, we're chatting with Tom Devine, author of the Corporate Whistleblower's Survival Guide, and we were talking about a strategy that an individual can take in order to surround the bureaucracy. Uh, is that a strategy that an individual initiates by him or herself? How do you do that? Who do you go to for help? Well, the, the magic word is solidarity, and the black magic word is isolation. Um, no matter how powerful the information or how strong the legal rights. Uh, if a whistleblower is alone, he or pre she probably is going to be counterproductive. Um, the system will weather the attack and be stronger in the aftermath. The whistleblower will be the equivalent of a, a vaccine for <laughs> abuse of power. And um, the person will be um, uh, much worse off, uh, if not professionally ruined. Uh, so it's, it's very important that you have effective partners. Uh, and my recommendation is, the first partners to go to are people who are organizations, NGOs, like the Government Accountability Project or um, for uh, state and federal government workers, public employees for environmental responsibility, or the Project on Government Oversight, um, that are seasoned veterans in working with whistleblowers who don't have a particular agenda for the specific problem, mm -hmm. um, their reason to be is helping whistleblowers. And they can help lead you to the second person you need to talk to, which is a very good lawyer uh, who's not just in it to make money or mm -hmm. not just in it to um, uh, t take care of your issue and get you out quick enough to get to somebody else, uh, but who's going to be committed uh, to the same goals of making a difference that you are and has mastered the legal landscape because you are trying to survive a gauntlet when you do this. Um, uh, the third place that you go then is uh, to uh, the, the people who are uh, affected by the abuse of power, uh, the public interest or community activists who are lifers on this. Um, uh, they have all the core background expertise and they can help navigate you then 
to the other places that you need to go. Who, who are these people? I'm well, sometimes they're uh, environmental organizations. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sometimes they're national security groups. Uh, a lot of times they're community mm -hmm. organizations because that's who's been affected mm -hmm. by it. Mm -hmm. And they can not only give you solidarity and perhaps be um, an outlet to mm -hmm. launder your concerns if you want to remain anonymous longer uh, and continue to receive more evidence before you're exposed as a, a threat. As they can potentially um, be the, the voice and the mouthpiece for the whistleblower's concerns. And they also have their own credibility with the politicians from local to national. They can tell you who are the people who have helped them, uh, who are sincere and genuine uh, about serving the public on this, and who are the people who are in bed with um, those who are abusing their power. They can alert you and play matchmaker with the right folks in the media. Uh, if the public isn't aware of something, you're not going to have solidarity. Uh, well, they know the reporters and the TV producers and the radio hosts uh, who've got a history in this issue. So you need solidarity, not just for support, but as working partners. And you need to start with someone you trust who can lead you down this road. Uh, trust is the other magic word, and it's earned trust. Uh, that's repeated over and over again in uh, the book. It's uh, you need to be able to trust your lawyer's commitment uh, and uh, the NGO that um, they're willing to protect you even um, uh, rather than use you, uh, even if it means that by exposing you to risk that you didn't agree to, they can do a little better. Um, it's a tough temptation for some of these groups. You need to research, do your homework. Uh, on the track record uh, for these folks. Government investigators. Um, part of our strategy with a legal campaign is to get so many different government investigations going that no one has the, the option to cover up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, to get them competing with each other. Um, but um, you know, bearing your soul to a government investigator can be real risky business. Um, they may turn on you. Uh, they may be sloppy or lazy and end up exposing you uh, when you don't want to be exposed. Uh, they may expose your coworkers and supporting witnesses. Um, earn trust. And the, the book is very clear and sort of the steps to go through so that people deserve uh, the trust that you, you give them. You talked about the possibility of being an anonymous whistleblower and maybe you can't be that throughout the entire process, but you might get to decide uh, or control for how long you remain anonymous. Talk a little bit about that. Well, there's advantages and disadvantages of each approach. I think the uh, primary advantage of being anonymous is that um, you continue to be plugged into the flow of information. Um, uh, and that's the most significant thing, is having the evidence uh, to prove that the public trust has been betrayed. As soon as you're exposed as a threat, if, if you're not fired, you'll at a minimum be isolated, um, uh, segregated, kept in the dark. You'll be out of the loop. Uh, and then you don't have much more to contribute. It's all just acting on what you previously knew. Um, so that's one advantage of it. A second is um, it's difficult to retaliate um, uh, against um, uh, a ghost. <laughs> uh, so it um, postpones uh, retaliation. Um, there's real advantages to uh, going public, however, as well. Uh, if you go public, you're much more likely to find platforms uh, for the evidence that you want to share. Um, uh, uh, Congress, congressional hearings or um, even 60 Minutes or things, they're not interested in hearing some intermediary talk about what you know. They need to hear it from you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if solidarity from uh, an aroused public is your goal, uh, it's going to be hard to do that if you stay in the shadows. Uh, what about your legal protections? Are you more uh, protected if you're anonymous or public? Well, you have to go public uh, or be able to prove that your anonymity was no longer effective uh, in order to trigger your legal rights. Um, you know, under every whistleblower protection law in the book, um, if an employer doesn't know an employee blew the whistle, the employer can't be guilty of retaliation <laughs> for blowing the whistle. Uh, and uh, so when you come out of the closet, um, a lot of times it's determined by when you need to fall back on legal rights uh, because things are getting pretty hot in that kitchen. All right, so we're talking about legal rights. 
Uh, you write in the book that there's been a legal revolution in the last few years in corporate uh, employee legal rights. Talk about that. Well, it's in legal revolution and corporate freedom of speech, and it's beyond anything I fantasized or dreamed of in, in, when I came to, to GAP. Uh, we passed 10 laws uh, since 2002 that have now made best practice free speech rights the rule rather than the exception uh, in corporate America. And this is a 180 degree reversal from uh, the uh, legally enforceable secrecy that's been uh, the tradition in the private sector. Um, in 2002, we passed the Sarbanes-Oxley law that covers um, 40 million people who work at companies that trade stock. Um, uh, we've passed the uh, consumer product safety uh, whistleblower rights covering all the workers connected with retail commerce from manufacturing through imports and exports. That's about 20 million more <coughs> people. Uh, we've passed laws protecting the workers in the nuclear power and nuclear weapons uh, industry, uh, in the financial industry, in the food industry, in the health care industry. Um, the, the truckers, the railroad workers, the cross-country bus drivers. Uh, um, uh, this is a, a whole new world, both for employees who want to defend the public uh, and for corporate leaders um, who, for the first time, um, actually have something to lose um, by retaliating uh, other than just bad vibes. <laughs> so tell me how this works. If you are an employee in one of the industries that is covered, uh, what is the nature of the protection that you actually have? Uh, there's three key elements to these new laws. And we've got uh, 47 corporate whistleblower laws on the books. It's a total hodgepodge. And one of the book's goals is to have a comprehensive uh, national system of rights. But um, for all these ones that have been passed in the last millennia, uh, I think probably the first thing that's significant is that um, you have access to federal district court mm -hmm. uh, and have justice determined by a jury of the citizens mm -hmm. you're purporting to defend when you stick your neck up. Mm -hmm. It kind of takes the politics out of justice there. Uh, and that's a, a real breakthrough for whistleblowers. Uh, the second thing is, um, We've got fair legal burdens of proof for what it takes to win so that the rules of the game are no longer rigged against you. Uh, and you're spending a lot of money to pretty much guarantee that whatever harassment you're challenging will get a legal seal of approval, be rubber stamped. Right. Uh, and then the third thing is um, remedies so that when you do win, uh, it actually matters that uh, you at least get back to even, and in many of these statutes, or some of the statutes, you'll be able to get punitive damages. Uh, uh, this is really three strikes for corporate crimes that are sustained by secrecy. Uh, and it means that people now have the freedom to bear witness. Uh, and that's why law enforcement agencies are so supportive of corporate whistleblower protection. Um, and you can't catch many criminals without witnesses. We're about out of time. What industries remain to be reached? Uh, there's um, uh, sectors of some of these industries, like the healthcare industry, it only involves certain types of medical care treatment. The food industry, it's um, covering um, um, health hazards by the Food and Drug Administration, but not meat and poultry um, plants uh, and contamination that goes in there. So we've got loopholes that. Um, really, really need to be filled in at this point. Um, uh, I think probably the two primary legal challenges, one is to get some consistency. Nobody knows where they stand right now, and that's, that's a lose-lose for employers and workers alike. Um, the other is to upgrade some of these dinosaur statutes uh, so that people have a fighting chance when they act on their rights. Um, 60% of the whistleblower complaints are about occupational safety hazards, and those people don't have any access to court. They have to depend on the government to adopt them, sort of like a big brother fighting on their behalf. In 2009, uh, that happened in like 0.31% of the cases, less than one half of 1%. Uh, so we've got a lot of catching up to do here as well. Well, many thanks to Tom Devine, author of the Corporate Whistleblower Survival Guide, a roadmap for making change on the job, protecting yourself in the process, and perhaps holding the bad guys accountable.
I'm Mark Cohen, and this has been Whistle Where You Work. Millions of barrels of oil gushing into the Gulf of Mexico, taking the lives of 11 rig workers, destroying the livelihoods of countless watermen, and devastating a precious habitat. We know from after-the-fact testimony to Congress that many on the rig feared a disaster from what one worker called a nightmare well. More than a month behind schedule, and tens of millions of dollars over budget in late April 2010, BP and Halliburton cut corners to finish the job on Deepwater Horizon. Despite all the warning signs, no one blew the whistle, and tragedy resulted. Endless miles of beaches soaked in crude, innocent wildlife killed, ecosystems destroyed, commercial fishing abruptly halted, it was the biggest oil disaster in our nation's history. But it didn't have to happen if someone had blown the whistle. Too often, workers are afraid to speak out publicly or even anonymously behind the scenes. And with good reason. They fear losing their job, their paycheck, and being blacklisted from their industry. Here's what BP and the oil and gas companies don't want their workers to know. Many laws protect employees who blow the whistle on unsafe practices and wrongdoing on the job. There are laws that protect whistleblowers against retaliation, even laws that reward whistleblowers who expose corporations that defraud the government. But before you or someone you care about becomes a whistleblower, please, Know your rights. Know your rights means this. You can act to protect your fellow workers and public from harm and protect yourself from getting fired or against other types of retaliation. You don't need to be a martyr or victim to do the right thing. We at the Government Accountability Project provide expert advice and counseling to workers who want to exercise their free speech rights on the job. We've taken on the White House, drug companies, the nuclear industry, and international banks, and we've protected our clients. We offer independent, objective information and the greatest possible degree of privacy and confidentiality. If you want to know how to blow the whistle and protect your rights, please contact the Gulf Coast Know Your Rights Campaign at www.knowyourrightscampaign.org. Just a year before the Deepwater Horizon tragedy, BP declared that an oil spill was highly unlikely, but that if one should occur, no significant adverse impacts are expected. We can't turn back the clock, but we can help workers throughout the Gulf Coast prevent another disaster from happening. If you want to blow the whistle on wrongdoing, don't put yourself in harm's way. Know your rights. Contact us 